started. You can take a comfortable seat, please. I'm really glad to see you. I know that you're not all morning people. I can see who's here. And really, I just want to celebrate again that you are getting up to have a morning practice at a time where it's always the case that how we start the day kind of determines the unfolding of the day. And so how you're starting right now in these very um, painful, precarious and poignant times, this matters so much. So thank you for coming in. You can rest your hands in your lap if you like and close your eyes. You also could choose to put one hand on the heart if you prefer, and maybe one hand on the belly. And if you just came from sleep and you're not a morning person, you may have to practice being a little bit more of your vibrant antenna, receiving, transmitting. If you are a morning person and you're accustomed to starting your day like this, you can come to what's familiar and centering and grounding for you. So my recommendation this morning and in so many other practices is that we sense the larger world of which we're a part and we sense the inner world of which we can steward our own response to the larger world. And I sometimes call that larger thing the immensity and I sometimes call this inner thing the intimacy. And so just getting a sense of the immensity first, one way to do that is to let your mind and body be really still at this moment, but to sense as if you did have an antenna or like one of those things on the submarine that goes up and then it looks about, you're gonna send your attention upwards, outwards, and just imagine a full spectrum view of what our world is facing right now. You don't have to intellectually grasp it. I'm only recommending that you sense the surround. And yes, it's ungrounding, it's, dysregulating, it's overwhelming, it's all of these things you've been speaking to me about. But rather than have the head in the sand like an ostrich, I'm recommending that you just become aware and let yourself add to that awareness that you're sitting here for practice with dozens of others. They're also dedicated to being aware. And then let your attention include now beyond this particular time of this immensity, include the tradition of yoga, which is thousands of years of dedication. And this tradition was developed in a time when people lived more indigenously, more in contact with nature, with the earth. And try to sense your place in this larger tradition. Don't judge how far you've come or how many stepping stones you've had on the path of yoga. Only sense that this tradition welcomes you right now in the here and now. And then let your attention kind of come inward, inward, inward until you feel more connected to the intimacy of your own heart, where you have a dedication to being a person who's awake and aware was grounded and compassionate. And deliberately try to sense where that lives in your body because it does, it's within you. Now, as you breathe in, try to imagine that most intimate connection to your own grounded and compassionate heart that is reaching outwards to touch the immensity and beyond that the tradition and when you exhale that you're returning to this most intimate place so the inhale expands concentrically even the body senses this expansion the ribs widen for example and your exhale is a return to this place of intimacy
As you practice this, make the breath smooth so it feels like the inhale rises to touch that kind of vast unknown and the exhale returns you to touch the internal ever unfolding intelligence. You don't even know how it's gonna unfold. And please do that for three breath cycles more. And then you can join your hands together at your heart and we'll chant Asatoma Satgamaya. Let's begin. Om Asatoma Sarkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mridhyodama Amritam Gamaya Asatoma Sarkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mridhyodama Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sarkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mridhyodama Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om With your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart and release your hands. When you're ready to, and please open your eyes. Okay, and we're going to do a little bit of cleansing breath practice, and I'm going to switch my camera for you. Okay, so I can't really make this one sit upright. I'll go back to my mat and sit. You guys can stay seated. I am getting my adapters for my computer today, so that should make all of this a little bit easier again. Okay, so with a comfortable seat, and I would recommend you're sitting on something. Most of you are already doing that. We're gonna do Kapalabhati, and then at the top of the inhale, we're gonna hold the breath in, little suspension, and then we'll exhale and blow out through the mouth like a little straw. So a long, slow exhale using the deep, low belly. So your hands out over your knees, and then let's begin. This is an exhale through the nose. Exhale completely through the nose and inhale through the nose. Prepare to hold the inhale at the top. Make a tiny opening with the mouth and exhale as if blowing through a straw. A long, slow and silent exhale for this one. We're using the low belly and that's going to tone and increasingly incrementally get stronger at the end of the exhale where you're the most toned then you radically relax and let the next in breath simply come
Now we're going to repeat that. Let's begin. Now exhale all the way through the nose, a long, slow exhale as you can. And then inhale through the nose, lower, middle, and upper to hold the breath in your heart. And blowing out like a tiny straw. And deeply relax. Place your left hand to the side of your seat, please. Raise your right arm up and side bend to your left. We're gonna do a little opening for the rib cage, the diaphragm. And then we'll see if one more round of Kapalabhati, you can have a little more strength or vigor for that. So keeping your right hip grounded and actually pressing your right knee down towards the floor as you side bend to your left, breathe in smoothly through your nose. And think about the inhale still connecting you to that larger immensity. And then your exhale returning you to an inner sense of what is most intimate. Do that one more time, inhale. And exhale. And then inhale, raise your right arm, raise your torso and let's change sides. Place your right hand down, side bend to your right. Keep your left hip grounded, press your left knee out and down towards the floor, even if it doesn't reach. And then on the inhale, you sense like this widening, this sort of concentric expansion outwards. But the exhale is still a return. So it has this kind of pulsation to it. And take your time so when you're greeting the sensations of your body, you can trust in the process of yoga and no need to kind of perseverate on any one sensation. The sensations of the body are information, but not uh, problematic. And with your next inhale, rise up to center. Now please twist to your right, cross your left hand over your right knee. Twist to your right, you can gaze over your right shoulder. And try rotating your upper chest and heart so the twist is really the upper thoracic spine is a part of your twist and hips and pelvis can be stable. And consider again with the inhale, you're actually expanding outwards and that goes beyond the skin of your body. And the exhale is a return to that which is most indwelling. And then please rotate around to center and cross your right hand over your left knee. Walk your left hand behind you. Twist to your left, gaze over your left shoulder. Now you might sense the inhale is more expansive in the first and middle third of the torso when you're twisting, but do try to bring some of the breath up into your heart, including the back of your heart, and sense also between the upper shoulder blades and even into your collarbones. And the exhale really is more the duty of the deep low belly, sort of ushering the exhale out from the bottom upwards out through the nose.
and then rotate around to face center. Now I'll take your hands to your shoulders. So one more pranayama, I'll take my glasses off. So now we're gonna do Kapalabhati with a rotation of the twist. When we come to center and we exhale completely, we are then going to inhale, suspend the breath. We'll exhale out the left. We'll inhale, suspend. We'll exhale out the right. So let's begin like this. center. Exhale completely through the nose. Now inhale, lower, middle, and upper. You're going to hold the breath at the top. Close the right nostril. Exhale, left side. Inhale, both nostrils, lower, middle, and upper to suspend the inhale. Close the left nostril, exhale, right side only. Release your right hand down. And then as you sit quietly for just a few moments, see if you can sense that this thing I'm calling the immensity and beyond, this thing I'm referring to as the intimacy, they are not separate. We're going to move into a more active physical practice with asana. We're going to come up for the sun salutation. So when you come up, I'm going to recommend that you do use two blocks this morning for Uttanasana, but also for a couple of standing twisting poses. You can step up to stand. Let me see if I got my camera, so I'm not cutting my head off just a moment. <laughs> Once my cables come, the, uh, the new cables for the new computer, I won't have to make all these adjustments. It'll just be set up, but this is our circumstance right now. So join your hands together, please. Now, it's my hope that your ujjayi breath is going to be easier to access and that you've sort of cleared out the lungs from the air pollution, the air toxicity. Those breath practices we were doing are called kriyas or cleansing practices like and then the Nadi Shodhana is also a cleansing breath practice. Let's see how this feels, okay? Using Ujjayi, inhale, up, or Dvahastasana. And exhale, chair pose, Ukatasana. Inhale, rise up, a little bit of a back bend, so keep your heels grounded. Let the hips come forward, raise your heart. Exhale, Uttanasana, line your hips up over your heels so when you come down, your legs are very stable. Inhale, glide forward through your heart. Respect the inhale pause at the top there. Exhale, left toes back. With your inhale, sweep your arms wide. Rise up. Exhale, wide to descend. Inhale, step forward, heart forward. And exhale, Uttanasana. Use the deep low belly to exhale completely. Now inhale, glide forward. With each breath, respect the top pause and the bottom pause. You exhale, step your right foot back and acknowledging the exhale pause, then you'll inhale, rise up. 
crescent lunge. And exhale to descend. This time we'll use the blocks to step back to downward facing dog pose. So inhale. And then exhale, plank pose. Many of you know this sequence. Some of you are going to do it for the first time. Inhale to cat. Exhale, cow pose. Bring your heart forward. Inhale, roll through to seal pose. And then exhale, melt forward and down to cobra pose. Now inhale, go up, seal pose. Include lifting your chin. And then exhale, plank pose. Use the strength of your push reflex. Inhale, downward facing dog pose. And then exhale, one foot, second foot, Uttanasana completing and one long exhale. Inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to your heart. Continuing, inhale, Ordva Hastasana. Put a sense that the I'm calling the immensity. When you exhale, sit down, Ukatasan. Coming more towards the intimacy inside. Inhale, rise up, a little bit of a back bend. Heels ground, hips forward, heart up. Exhale, Uttanasana. Focus on completing the exhale using the deep belly muscles. Inhale, glide forward, raise to your fingertips. This is very spacious. Exhale, left toes back. Inhale, rise. We exhale, airplane pose. Inhale to rise. Crescent lunge. And exhale, airplane pose. We'll do this about five times. So I know that most of us have not been outside walking. If you haven't been hiking in the Pacific Northwest or been walking in your neighborhood. So we want to use the leg muscles, encourage circulation. Have a sense also of the strength we can use, the push reflex. Press down through your right foot, left toes. And have a sense of agency or capacity. And do it one more time, rise up. Now exhale to descend. You can touch both blocks lightly. And inhale, left foot forward, heart forward, one long inhale. The Uttanasana. Observe the deep low belly, especially towards the end of your exhale. Inhale, glide forward. Okay, right toes back. Inhale, rise. You know what's coming. Say about five times, exhale, airplane pose. Don't rest on your left thigh, but rather press down and keep the hip stable but spacious. Each time you exhale to come over, keep the back of the waist broad like a parachute. When you inhale to rise up, think of the first third, middle, and then the upper third of the breath. Twice more. Last one. Now as you exhale, this time go ahead and touch the two blocks and do that more firmly. Step backwards, downward dog as you inhale. And then exhale, come forward to plank. Inhale, cat pose. Then you're going to exhale, cow pose. Bring your heart forward, open your throat. Inhale, seal. So you glide through playfully. Exhale, cobra, bhujangasana. Inhale, rise up, seal pose. 
and exhale, plank pose. Use the push reflex of your arms. Inhale, downward facing dog pose. And then exhale, awkward foot first, second foot, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, or Bahastasana. Exhale to the heart. We're going to add to the sequence. Nothing will be unfamiliar particularly. So just noticing how your body's responding, given that we've had this air pollution. I know for some of you, the windows or doors in your home have not been that capable of keeping the smoke out. I spoke to some of you yesterday about that. So notice how it's feeling in your lungs and your body and give yourself the good grace to remember this is a cleansing practice. Here we go. Inhale up. Exhale, Ukatasan, chair pose. Inhale, rise up. A little bit of a back bend here. Exhale, Uttanasana, holding as when closing the harmonium or the bellows. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, left foot back. This time, inhale, rise, crescent lunge. And exhale, warrior two. Now turn your right hand skyward. Inhale to go up. Exhale, side angle pose. Just place your right forearm on your right thigh, left arm past your ear. And then inhale, rising warrior. So the pelvis is rotating to bring you up to this. It's not only the arms and the rib cage. Exhale, Parjva Kanasana. Keep your right outer hip strong, please. Inhale, rise, Virabhadrasana two, and up from there. Exhale, Parjva Kanasana. Inhale, glide up one more time. And now exhale and windmill your arms over so your right hand comes to its block, left to its, pick up the left heel. Inhale, step forward, heart forward. And exhale for a deep bow towards your legs. Inhale, glide forward. Okay, right toes back. Inhale, rise up, crescent. And warrior two. Virabhadrasana two. Good inhale, rising up. And exhale, Parjakanasana. Inhale, rise. This is where you can kind of sense you're reaching into that immensity. And exhale, returning. Even noticing the strength needed at your core there. Inhale, glide up, press into your left heel, do not sink into your left hip. Exhale, rotate, Parjvakanasana. Inhale, glide up. And exhale, windmill down, left hand, right hand. And step backwards, downward dog pose. You know, this time exhale forward to plank and pause here for a moment. We're going to inhale toe touch the right toes to the right. Exhale back to plank. Inhale left toes to the left. Exhale back to plank. Inhale right. Exhale plank. Inhale left. Plank. Okay, right. Plank left plank downward dog pose so notice with some exertion in the belly and that push reflex with the arms what do you do now as you come back to the breath in your pelvis and your lower abdomen
And inhale, glide forward to plank. We're gonna pass through into the vinyasa that we've been doing. So once you get here, gaze down between your thumbs. Now inhale, cat, gaze back towards your toes, between your knees. Exhale to cow pose, gaze forward and up. Inhale, seal pose. Exhale, cobra, we gaze down and forward in the distance. Inhale, rise up and gaze up, seal pose. Exhale, plank, gaze between your thumbs. Inhale, downward dog, the gaze goes back between your toes and your heels. And now stepping your awkward foot forward first, second foot forward, come to Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. And exhale your hands to your heart. Now we're gonna put a little twisting in there. But inhale, raise your arms up. And exhale, bend your knees and come down to chair pose. Inhale. Now exhale, place your left hand on the inside, right hand on the block. Press your left arm and knee against each other. Inhale, twist to your right. Exhale, return. Inhale, twist right. Exhale, return. So imagine when you're twisting right, it's like raising your antenna to reach out to that which is beyond immense. And the exhale brings you back to that which is inward, intimate. One more time, please. And then exhale to center, rise up to chair, inhale. And then come down, right arm to the inside. Fix your arm and your knee against each other. Inhale, twist left. Exhale to return. It's kind of incomprehensible, really. When you inhale, twist left, the enormity, the immensity of our world and our complete dependence upon it. But how we get lost <laughs> along the way. So feeling into it in your own embodied way in this sort of somatic way. Inhale one more time, reach up. Twisting left. Exhale, return. Inhale, chair pose. Now exhale, push down, rise up to stand. And inhale to open your chest, your heart, and your throat. And exhale, come back to center at your heart. Okay, let's check that out in the basic lunge, how we practice the twist. So come down, so your right foot's gonna stay forward, left foot back, this is called basic lunge. Yeah. And the left hand can be firm on this block. I just moved mine from the side, a little more center, because when I push down, I want this line right here to be strong. Okay, so inhale, twist right, using the strength of your left arm for the twist. Exhale to return. And inhale, twist right. Exhale, return. No sense of rushing any part of the breath here. We'll do this twice more. Inhale, twist. Use the strength of your left arm to support your right arm to reach like that. So in this action, we have both our push reflex and our reaching reflex. Let's release this one. We're gonna step forward to Uttanasana to change sides. So step your left foot up to meet your right, Uttanasana. 
Inhale, glide forward. And then exhale, right toes back. You might center your block like I did for the first side. And inhale, twist left. So the push reflex is your right arm. The reaching reflex is now your left arm. Press down, twist left. Exhale. Inhale, reach. Exhale, return. Here's the last one. Inhale, reach. And exhale, return. Now this time, let's step it back to downward dog pose with both blocks for your hands. And come forward to plank. Touch your knees down for table. Take one block to support your head. And reach back. And so child's pose is a pose where we really focus on being more connected to that intimacy. So you're inward, kind of like inward and downward. And I like to say sometimes, like taking refuge, refuge from the mental Ferris wheel of your own mind, not so much taking refuge from what the life at large is asking of you. You know that ask is there, but right now you're here to renew and to lessen the noise between that which is most intimate to you and what this immensity is asking for from you. So lessening the noise means lessening the mental Ferris wheel the radio static of your own broadcast. So you can imagine that when you're in child's pose here and it might help to relax your tongue and your eyes and to really just sense, can we for these moments give it up the mental broadcast? I'm not saying it's easy. And then walk your hands back towards your knees and let's take a blanket. And if you have, you can roll this blanket. So open it from the storage fold and then roll it long side to long side all the way. And place it down the right side of your mat, something like this. Okay, so I've got my two blocks. I'm gonna recommend that you do use the blocks for this to give yourself a little bit more strength. Of course, I'm your teacher this morning and I don't have long arms. So this may be like my adaptation and you might not need it. It's always optional. Of course, your practice is your own. We're gonna be stepping into pigeon pose in just a moment. So if you place both hands like you're about to go to plank pose, take the left toes back like plank pose and hug your right knee up between your arms towards your sternum. So this is one legged plank pose. Gently put the outer right foot like this on the outside of your mat and begin to lower down. So your outer right shin comes down towards the floor and your blanket is there to scooch under your outer right hip. You can press into the blocks with both hands. And that pressure down, or you can use the floor, of course, but that pressure down is to help you lift inwardly. So you're not resting on or collapsing into your right hip. It is important that you don't collapse like that. Your pelvic floor, your brain, your bladder, they don't need that kind of pressure. So when you're rooting into your arms here, press your right knee down actively, but lift the low belly in and up. Now keeping that inner tone to the lower abdomen, you can come over to your forearms. Again, you're not collapsing onto your right hip. In fact, you can keep the right and left elbow pressing down against the blocks a little bit. So we're also not collapsing into the right or left shoulder. Let the breath become long 
smooth, a little slower. Now cross your left hand over both blocks. Take your right hand on your left and twist to your right. This is not a classical yoga pose, so I mean, we could name this revolved pigeon pose, but even what we're doing isn't actually pigeon pose. It's a part of pigeon pose. If you wanted to give this a Sanskrit decoration, it would be Pavrita Ekapada Rajaka Potasana. Okay, when you next exhale, go ahead and release from this back to your elbows. Now, tuck the left toes under, straighten and strengthen your left leg behind you. Press down into both arms, both elbows, and lift your hips to slide your right toes back. So you're doing plank pose on your elbows right now. Notice the push reflex in both arms the strength of both legs, and any tone you have in the low belly. And then touch your left knee down, right knee down, scoot the blanket if it's in your way, and then change the blanket to the other side. Okay, plank pose with both arms and step your right foot back to plank pose. Then hug your left knee up between your upper arms. Put the outer left foot like this on the floor, and then start lowering your left outer shin, left outer hip. As you come down to the support of the blanket, you can reach back to snug it under your left hip. Press into both hands. So there's a sense again of the strength in the low belly. You're not just resting or collapsing into your left hip. Breathe in, breathe out, and come down to your forearms, intending to keep your strength here too. Now, as you maintain that sense of strength and tone, the left outer shin, you can actively think of pressing down, left outer knee actively pressing down, even the left outer thigh, but also lifting up in the inner belly. Then we can add the twist. So you place your right hand across the block, left hand on your right, and twist to your left. And in this twisting, see if you can keep a sense, all your body parts are collaborating. They have to be kind of unified. And rotate around to face forward again. So both elbows to the blocks. Press down actively into your elbows and your forearms. Curl your right toes under. Straighten your right leg and step backwards to dolphin plank. Noticing the strength of both legs, both arms, and the deep inner belly. And then you can touch your knees down, scoot your blanket aside. Let's keep the elbows on the two blocks, please. And put the hands like a, a suction cups. I don't have a better word for that right now. So when you reach back, I don't want you to tip the blocks over, but do keep your elbows kind of on the center of the blocks and reach back. So the fingers press against each other such that you can separate the heels of your hands, the centers of your palms. And that helps to roll your shoulders in what we call external rotation. 
Relax the weight of your head, but with no sense of collapsing your armpits towards the floor. Roll yourself forward and take one block to kneel on in Vajrasana. So the block is like this when you kneel on it. Yeah. Good. Rest your hands in your lap. Try to sense what's happening now as you connect. Remember, what I've called this intimacy and this immensity, and even beyond that, the tradition of yoga, these are not separate. Now, keeping your blocks nearby, your rolled blanket, whatever you were sitting on earlier, and if it was your rolled blanket, then try to sit on two blocks, perhaps, uh, like a little platform, like this, something like that. I'm going to sit on my bolster. You could sit on a folded blanket. When you take the seat, whatever way you take it, please come to Jhanu Sirsasana. And then the rolled blanket, it's going to act like a little yoga prop. Lay this over the top of your right thigh like this, and you can kind of press down. So inhale, raise your left arm up then. Twist to your right a little bit, so you're actually facing towards your right leg. And then exhale and come over. So the blanket is going to provide a little bit of pressure on the lower abdomen. And I'd like us to practice breathing into the back of the waist. Now, if you're someone for whom when you come forward, you actually don't get close enough for the blanket to be meaningful, you could either choose to roll the blanket again or fold it in half and roll it, or you can forego the idea of the blanket. For those of you who are inclined when you do this pose to just fold your torso onto your thigh, the blanket is acting as a spacer so that you are actually broadening the back of your waist more, not trying to have the spine completely straight. Do a few more breath cycles. Let it be gentle and inward, and a time again to surrender the, the mental noise, the um, mental broadcast. And with an inhale, reach your left arm forward, rise up to sitting, and then release. Now, let's rotate the torso a little bit to the left, so you're going to twist in the other direction, and this guy can still be here for you. So when you side bend over the blanket, it's going to be more of a true side bend. So for those of us who are limber, flexible, bendy wendies, sometimes we actually miss the chance to side bend and get into this part of the waist, because the pelvis or the inner thigh lets us go so far, theoretically. So now sweep your left arm past your left ear and let this be a true side bend. A little bit of pressure on the right rib cage or right low belly where the blanket is on the outside there. So 
Some people will find they can easily reach the right toes. Some people will find their toes are in a different zip code. Inhale and slowly reach your left arm. That is the reach reflex, which we need. And exhale, root down, rise up. And let's change the legs. Okay, so we're going to start by going towards the left leg. So that is as you raise your right arm up, it's a twist to your left. And then exhale to come forward. Invite your body to relax into this one. So don't strive for something more in the physical body. But think of actually the pressure of the blanket against the abdomen, the inwardness of the pose, the breath, working to kind of recalibrate the physiological, like interior of who you are. And then with your inhalation, reach with your right arm, rise up to sitting. Release your right arm. Let's make a little turn to the right. So your twist goes right and your side bend's gonna go left. So rotating right, and then snug the blanket so it's close, and you side bend over it. Reach your right arm past your right ear. And let the side bend be a true side bend. You can think of the right arm, for example, like the branch of a willow or the dangling plant, the hanging plant. Maybe you reach your left toes, maybe you don't. And reach with your right arm, rise back up. And step your left foot in. And if you still have this blanket roll, of course you might have to um, neaten it up or snug it up, you know, make it less lumpy. You did move it about some. We're gonna use it for Shavasana. And let me recommend that you're also gonna have one block close enough by for your Shavasana. I like to move these things so I won't knock them over. So I also have a bolster here. You may as well have a bolster or an extra blanket or something of that sort. So here's my recommendation. You've got your blanket lengthwise. You're not going to sit on it. You can sit in front of it and reach for a block because this is going to go under your blanket under your head. You don't know where to put it until you're actually lying down. So you lay down and you take the block. It'll be on the flat setting like this and that goes under the blanket. And that should have the effect of causing the blanket to support your whole cervical spine, but it also has your head slightly forward and the shoulders dropping back. So this is a passive way of doing what we call Jalandhar Bandha. It's also closing what we call, or it's toning down what we call Udana Vayu which is an energy pattern in the throat that could lead to the monkey mind or the ferris wheel mind. So, and turn your palms face down, please. And close your eyes. And 
And so when you close your eyes and your experience is going to be hopefully more inward, this is a time to sense that that which I call the intimacy and the immensity, they aren't separate. That each of us is in fact an expression of that immensity embodied in our individual skin suit, but we aren't separate from the elements from nature, nor from the cosmos itself. Soften the place between your eyebrows and let the skin over your forehead melt from any sense of urgency or doing, any of the frenzy of daily life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in that softening, invite that to be also an invitation for the mind to slow down behind the curtains of the eyelids. Let the eyes themselves feel a little heavier and more at rest in the sockets. And imagine your temples, right side, left side, being smooth, at ease. And soften the muscles of your cheeks from your nose, the bridge of your nose, from your eyes down to your cheeks and over to your ears. Allow there to be a gentle releasing. You can melt all the muscles of your face. And allow the hinge of your jaw and your tongue and the entire lower jaw to be at rest, to soften. Noticing in the softening, the melting of the muscles of your face, what can happen for your mind? your heart and your body.
Now allow any part of your arms that are touching the ground to also get heavier. So elbows, perhaps some of your fingerprints or thumb prints. Maybe the side of your hand is touching. Imagine your spine becoming more grounded to the blanket, which is supporting from your upper spine down to your lower spine. Then allow your hips to get heavier, to be supported by the ground beneath you. You may sense the bone of the sacrum or the pelvis. These incremental but deep letting go processes. Invite the backs of your thighs to either relax into the bolster or the ground beneath you. And then your knees and your calves becoming limp with relaxation. And notice the sensations at the backs of your heels. Notice without judging or narrating the experience. Now, as you're resting, nothing needs to change, but I'm gonna ask you to simply roll your head as far as it comfortably goes to the right on the blanket that you're on. So that is gonna add a little stretch to your neck, possibly on the left side. You can equate this Rotating the head as a willingness to see in a full spectrum way. Then rotate your head to center and then to the left as far as it comfortably goes. And then roll your head back to center. And please gently wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bend your knees when you're ready to. I'd like you to roll to your side. You can come up from resting when you're ready to and return to sitting. Rest your hands out over your knees as you like.
close your eyes and let your meditative inwardness be non-separate from all that you are dependent upon in this immensity in this cosmos that which we are dependent upon in nature I'm inviting you to actually sense your interdependence in this way, which also right now means to sense your vulnerability, our vulnerability. Asatoma society, our civilization, may we know that which is real from that which is unreal. May we hold to that which is true and not to that which is untrue. May we prioritize that which is luminous, not that which causes darkness or disintegration. May we know the finite from the infinite that which is fleeting and that which is abiding. May we have peace within, peace amongst us, 
and peace in all the realms. And bring your hands to your heart if you like. We'll chant Om Shanti together. Om Shanti 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 Thank you for coming together for morning practice and contributing your dedication and your vulnerability and also your strength, contributing that to the whole. Thank you very much.